Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on preparing data in Excel to import into SPSS. So it's not uncommon in counseling research for us to collect data using Excel, because Excel is an excellent platform for manipulating and formatting data, and then importing that data from Excel into SPSS for analysis. It's important to try to catch any errors with the data in Excel and correct them in Excel before importing into SPSS. Ideally, we'd be able to catch all the errors at this level. So I have these fictitious data on this worksheet, and I have deliberately placed examples of common errors that I've seen when working with data sets. So first, let's take a look at the structure of these data. So these data are formatted correctly in the sense that we have the variables as columns. And the participants in the rows. This is how you want to structure your data before attempting to import it into SPSS. So variables are in columns and cases are in rows. So let's take a look at the first variable. This variable is named ID. You could also name it ID number. And it has 1001 through 1020. So there's 20 participants in these data. And this is actually, I believe, a good way to structure an ID number. Now, oftentimes, of course, we would have, in addition to this ID number, this ID variable, we would have the last name and first name and perhaps other identifying information from that participant, meaning identifying information that's not a focus of the study. All these data are to some extent identifying, but the first and last name, date of birth, or any other identifying information that's not going to be a focus of the study should be removed before importing this data into SPSS. So it's important that before you reach this point, where the last name and the first name and other identifying information not a focus of the analysis would be removed, that you'd make a copy of this Excel workbook so that later on you can connect these ID numbers back with the names if you need to. It's not unusual once data like these are transferred to SPSS for us to email that SPSS file to authorized parties for analysis. And of course, if they are authorized, they could see the last name and the first name. Uh, but I look at it as a risk management issue. There's no reason to include that extra identifying information in a file that's going to be transmitted if you don't have to. So moving on to the next variable, which is gender. So depending on what kind of study you're doing, uh, this could be an independent variable that you're using. And you can see that the values are recorded as strings, female and male. But for SPSS, you're going to want to change the coding to a 0 and a 1. So let's say, for instance, that we want to set male to equal 0 and female to equal 1. We want to make this change this recoding of the variable prior to importing it into SPSS. So we can do this by selecting all the values in the variable and then hitting Control H, which is find and replace. But there's an important factor here that I want to make you aware of. Say that you want to replace the string male with the value 0. If you type in male here, and then replace it with zero and hit replace all. You're going to replace the string male every time it occurs with the value zero, including the part of the string of female, which is male. 
So the string male is a substring in the word female. And Excel will pick up on that. So in making this recoding, you have to start with female. So it'd be female. I want to replace that with the value one. And you click replace all. And you can see Excel informs you that's made 14 replacements. And that looks correct. We have every place we had the string female, we now have a one. So we just need to replace the male strings with zero. And now we can use the input we had before. Find male and replace with zero. Click replace all. And you can see that Excel has made the six replacements. So that variable is now recoded correctly for use in SPSS. So now let's take a look at the age variable. So we see that the ages all look like appropriate ages. And we have one age that's NA. Now, not available is really the same thing as missing. And I find the best way to record this is simply to leave the cell blank. This is also a good opportunity to look for any values that may be out of the acceptable range. So even though these all appear to be appropriate ages for a particular study, maybe in the study that these are for, you know the minimum age was 30. And you can see that there's a value of 25 here. So maybe this participant was entered in the study incorrectly or the age was recorded incorrectly. An easy way to search for values that might be out of range, either on the low end or on the high end, would be to sort this column from smallest to largest. And then it'll come up and say you want to expand the selection and you do. And then you can see the 25 would come to the top and you'd realize that, again, either you had a participant that should be in the study that was in there, or the age was misrecorded. Then we have another independent variable here, which is program. And you can see there's, and I say this, these were counseling students, you have emphasis on group, career, and family. Again, you'd want to convert these, just as I did over here, to say zero for group, one for career, and two for family. None of these strings are substrings in any of the other strings, so you could make these changes in any order. Although I'd recommend making the changes starting with zero, then to one, then to two. Then looking at the admission date, you can see these dates seem to be clustered fairly close together. But again, if you were to sort these, you'd see that there is one date that's around five years different than the other. And depending again on the parameters of your study, uh, this is likely to be an error. So you'd want to correct that at this time and bring it to the correct year. Then we have GPA, grade point average. You can see the way this was recorded was missing. I had over here an example that had NA. Again, I think blank is the best way to go there. Taking a look at the pretest, this is an example of where you have added information. For example, 60 is the high score. Well, 60 is the high score in this variable, but you don't want to record that information in the actual variable. So we correct this so that it matches the other scores in terms of format. Similarly, 40 typed out as a string is not what we want. We want it to be for zero. And then here is something I've seen a few times. We have a score and then a comment about that score that deals with when the data was collected. So with this participant, the individual that collected it uh, types in left early, suggesting that this might not be a valid score. So if they left before all the time was allotted for the pretest or they didn't complete the pretest, you know, whatever this means, you'd have to find out what does left early mean. 
it may mean that you have an invalid administration of the test, but the pretest could have been the first test given in the session, so it was completed properly. So this is a variable, this is a data point you'd have to investigate. And let's say that you determined that the left early means that they only took part of the test and you call that invalid. Again, you would just delete, that would be a missing value. Over here in aptitude test, uh, here's another example I've seen before where there's no score and the individual recording the data offers an explanation. In this case, the participant was absent. And that may be data that you want to record, but this wouldn't be the place to record it. This would be a missing value. Information like that, and even the example with left early, you may want to put in an additional column perhaps one labeled comments that you would save and you would delete for the version that you import into SPSS. Another example here is where the level of measurement doesn't match the level of measurement used in the variable. So lowest score. Well that doesn't really tell you what the score is. It does rank it. You know it's the lowest ranked which would be the ordinal level of measurement but this level of measurement is, let's say, interval. Let's say this is an interval level of measurement, which SPSS is going to convert into scale because interval and ratio both get converted into what SPSS refers to as scale. So in a case like this, if you could find the lowest score and put that value in, that would be the best option. Otherwise, you'd have to delete this. So let's say in this instance, the score is identified and it was 75. And then in this last variable, I have a couple situations that commonly occur. One is a value that is recorded two places to the right of the decimal, whereas the other values are not. Now, if you enter the data, uh, with the exception of this other example I'll show you, but if you entered this variable in as it is, that would be okay. You can have a value 38 and 75 and 82 and 51.88. But it's unusual that this record would be stored this way, this score, and the other records would be scored differently. So let's say in this instance the scores are rounded and the value was 52. Now it could also be that the 51.88 was recorded correctly and all the other scores uh, need to have the two places to the right of decimal indicated. And then in this last example, this is another level of measurement difference. So below 50, uh, that's categorical, and this is recorded as interval, this variable. So below 50 is not going to work. So again, that would either be deleted or if you could actually find the score, that would be ideal. So let's say this score could be identified, and in fact it was, say, 47, which is below 50. That's the value you'd want to put in there. So other than converting the program variable to 0, 1, and 2 for the three levels, these data are now configured correctly to import into SPSS. I hope you found this video on preparing data in Excel to import into SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.